Hello folks, I apologize for this week's edition of my game previews being late, but there obviously was a problem with the sponsor, so it delayed the weekly review video for a couple days, and it's kind of just thrown everything out in a funk. I debated whether or not to even upload this because it's so close to kickoff time, but I figured, you know what? You guys deserve this content, and because I'm a hero with the second most integrity of all time after Urban Meyer, of course, I'm going to make this video anyway. So I hope you all enjoy it and hope you avoid the marijuana too. Baltimore versus Cleveland. I do do find it funny that the media and everybody, rightfully, I might add, hates Deshaun Watson because he has a shitload of sexual assault allegations against him, yet the same exact media seems to love Jameis Winston, who also has had sexual assault allegations against him. It's just, it's fucking weird. Either way, it's really not going to be enough for the Browns to compete with the Ravens, unless Jameis has one of his ultra-rare great games, and he is capable of that. He's like a Ryan Fitzpatrick with more rape tendencies, but I doubt that he he will have a game that'll be enough to keep up with the Ravens. The key stat, Cleveland's defense hasn't allowed a running back to gain more than 67 yards in any game. That could spell a little bit of trouble for the Baltimore Ravens, but guess what? They got Lamar Jackson, who's the best running quarterback ever, and Derrick Henry, who is in the middle of one of the greatest seasons a running back's ever had. So I believe that the Ravens will be just fine. That's why I have them winning this 38 to 14. And we got Detroit versus Tennessee. Another pretty lopsided matchup, which is crazy to think because I'm still not really used to the Lions actually being good, like legitimately good, like should be in the Super Bowl type of good, but they are. Whereas the Titans are in position not for a Super Bowl run, but for the number one overall pick in the 2025 draft because Will Levis doesn't look like the answer. Mason fucking Rudolph isn't the long-term answer. So until Tennessee gets it figured out at quarterback, they're just going to be irrelevant like they've mostly always been outside of that one run to the AFC Championship they had a couple years ago before they got killed by Kansas City. Key stat of the game, the Titans have scored 106 points so far this season. 44 of those 106 points have come within the first three drives of the game. So what does that mean? That means that the Titans, they get off to good starts and then they just end up kind of falling flat on their face and losing. So don't be shocked if Tennessee starts off with a lead, much like they did against Buffalo last week before getting blown out. That's why I think the Lions win this one comfortably. 42 to 14. Houston versus versus Indianapolis. Another thrilling divisional round matchup between two AFC South teams. Let's just be real. The Colts' ceiling and their success depends on the improvement of Anthony Richardson, and quite frankly, he just hasn't been good enough this year. He's not completing nearly enough amount of his passes, and I generally think, in general, that completion percentage is kind of an overrated stat because you can kind of fluff it up with a lot of short throws, but at the same time, in an era where quarterbacks are routinely completing 65 plus percent and you're down in the 50-51% range like Anthony Richardson is, that does speak to some bigger issues. But I do think this is going to be a close game. CJ Stroud had probably the worst game of his career last week versus the Packers. He didn't get a lot of shit about it. Just wanted to point that out there. My key stat is that Indy is 31st in rush defense. So expect Rocky Balboa impersonator Joe Mixon to have a big game. I think in the end, the Texans will do just enough to win this one. 27-21. to 21. Green Bay versus Jacksonville. The Jaguars are coming off of probably their best performance of the season thus far against the Patriots last week, which has been said about a lot of teams because a lot of teams play the Patriots and suddenly they look competent. I wonder why that is. Anyway, one of the few things that Trevor Lawrence has been able to do consistently is avoid turnovers or interceptions, but that also happens to be what the Packers defense is best at. That's my key stat of the game. Packers defense leads the league in turnovers forced with 17. So if there's ever going to be a game where Trevor Lawrence throws for two or three interceptions and kills the momentum of certain drives, it's going to be this one. On the other side, I think we all know that Jordan Love is liable to throw three touchdowns and three interceptions, and he doesn't really get much criticism for it for whatever reason, because I guess, you know, he's people just think he's going to become a first ballot Hall of Famer because the two previous quarterbacks for the same team turned out to be first ballot Hall of Famers. It's kind of weird. But anyway, so I think the Packers will hang on to win a close one here, 24 to 20. And yes, that is a AI generated cheese holding a Super Bowl trophy. I have no shame. Arizona versus Miami. Arizona is not a great team. Miami is certainly not a great team, but Miami is going to get Tua Tagovailoa back from injury, or at least we assume so. So this should be a more competitive game. My key stat for this game is that Miami and the Cardinals are the only two teams to win multiple games this season when they're trailing at the start of the fourth quarter. That's a little bit misleading and makes the Dolphins sound good. But for the Cardinals, that does kind of speak to their resiliency. And that's why I can see them winning this one on a late 
late field goal to win 23 to 21. New York Jets versus Patriots. Remember how I was just talking about how every team that seems to play the Patriots always has the best performance of their season thus far? Well, that rings true with the Jets, and I expect them to also play well in their second matchup with the Patriots, even though this one's going to be on the road. The Patriots are one of the worst teams in the league, maybe the worst team in the league. However, my key stat for the game is somewhat troubling if you are a Jets fan, just like being a Jets fan in general is troubling, but Aaron Rodgers' six interceptions in his last three games is the most he's ever had in any three-game span of his career. This is a guy who used to go entire seasons without throwing five interceptions. Now he's out here throwing three a week. It's really just sad to watch. So I think this is going to be a competitive game, but I do think the Jets will squeak it out 20 to 17. And if they don't, well, they got some serious fucking problems. Atlanta versus Tampa Bay. The last time these two teams met, we got a classic on Thursday Night Football and a high scoring classic to boot. Simply put, I really don't see any reason to expect why this will go any differently, except for the fact that the Bucks are now missing Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. But again, this is the Falcons we're talking about, and it's basically illegal for them to be good on defense. My key stat is that the Falcons suck at stopping the run, but Tampa excels at running the ball. So you have one team's weakness going up against another team's strength. In the long run, I believe that the Atlanta Falcons and their orgy-loving mascot will win this game 35-31. I don't know if it'll be a walk-off touchdown like it was the first time around, though. Philadelphia versus Cincinnati. One of the marquee games of the week as my Eagles travel to the land of the skyline Chile for the first time since 2016. Because I am an Eagles fan, you guys already know that I'm biased and all this stuff and all these super hateful accusations that get thrown upon me that are untrue, substantially untrue. I have sh never, ever shown any bias in favor of the Eagles whatsoever. But regardless, my key stat for this game is that both A.J. Brown and Jamar Chase are top four in receiving yards after contact since the start of the 2022 season. Basically, they are big physical boys, is all you have to have to know. And that's why they're really the best offensive player on each team. Although one might argue Saquon Barkley has been the Eagles' best offensive player this season. And Joe Burrow's having one of the best seasons of his career despite the Bengals' 3-4 and four record. Despite the Bengals being at home and despite Joe Burrow playing at a really high level, the Bengals' defense is doo-doo. And I think the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts are going to go in there and put a spanking on him. I have the Eagles winning this one 38 to 24. And if you don't like it, you can go pound sand, buddy. Chargers versus New Orleans. Remember those first two weeks of the season when the Saints were putting up 2007 Patriots numbers offensively and Derek Carr was the league MVP? Yeah, things happen quickly and change quickly in the NFL. The Saints are on the verge of another lost season while the Chargers are trying to rebound from a disappointing loss on Monday Night Football to the Cardinals. My key stat for this game is actually surprising. The Chargers have not scored a second half touchdown since week one. So basically, if you can get a lead on the Chargers early, you're in pretty good shape. But I do believe the Chargers will do just enough to eke out a win. I have them winning 19 to 16. Seattle versus Buffalo. Whenever I make these videos, I try to look for hidden stats, complex stats, stats that you might not see most of the time because I love producing quality content. But my key stat for this game when we talk about Josh Allen and we talk about Gina Smith and all of the different units. Okay, here's the key stat. The Buffalo Bills have averaged 38.3 points per game at home, but just 21 points per game on the road. So the Bills, they're a bit of a home merchant team. However, the Seahawks defense is so bad that I think this will be the week that changes. And that's why I have the Bills winning 44 to 34. Chicago versus Washington. The big storyline coming into this game is whether or not rookie sensation Jaden Daniels is going to play after his historic start to his career. But I think people are looking at this the wrong way. I think it doesn't matter whether or not Jaden Daniels plays because Jaden Daniels is a system quarterback. Now I say that kind of half joking, half not joking, but if Marcus Mariota can play anywhere near the way he did against the Panthers, yeah, I know it's the Panthers, but he looked like the best quarterback in the league coming off of the bench completely rusty, then I think the commanders have a chance. But it will not be easy. My key stat is that the Chicago defense has allowed 21 or fewer points in 12 straight games, but this Washington offense, even without Daniels, is very, very loaded and very, very good scheme-wise. So even though Jaden Daniels might miss this game because he's terrified of Caleb Williams, I think the Commanders are going to win 30 to 20. Mission accomplished, folks. Denver versus Carolina. When I said that I think the Panthers should start Bryce Young in place of Andy Dalton just to see if they can get anything out of him because the season's lost, I didn't mean that Andy Dalton and his family needed to get into a car accident. Either 
Either way, though, the Panthers remain a terrible team, and the Broncos remain a boring team as well, but at least not actively horrible like the Panthers. My key staff for this game, Denver is first in sacks allowed, meaning they prevent the fewest sacks, which has a lot to do with Bo Nix being mobile and escaping the pocket, whereas Carolina is 31st in sacks, meaning they just don't get to the quarterback a lot. So I think Bo Nix is going to have a big game, and I think the Broncos are going to win this one handily, 27 to 7. Kansas City versus Las Vegas. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who's going to win. One of the worst teams in the league or the team that's won two straight Super Bowls, three of the last five Super Bowls, and is currently 6-0, and even though their quarterback is playing like Seneca Wallace. It's just the same thing every week. The Chiefs, they play with their food. They sleepwalk until they absolutely need to get something. They're like, the, they're the fucking KD Warriors of football. Like, they're just going to find a way to win. There's never any point where you say to yourself, oh, I think they're going to lose. They just always find a way to win. The key staff for this game is that the Chiefs are the worst defense in the league at covering tight ends. So Brock Bowers, the star rookie, who I think, if he stays healthy, is going to be a Hall of Famer, should have a huge game. But that's really all the Raiders have going for them. I think the Chiefs win this one pretty handily, 31 to 13, while Mahomes throws three interceptions. Dallas versus San Francisco. A battle between two teams that haven't won a Super Bowl since Tupac died. The 49ers are three and four, which is not where a lot of people expected them to be going into the season, even though they have had a lot of injuries. Dallas, meanwhile, is just Dallas, really. It's just a team that I think has missed their window with this particular coaching staff and particular quarterback to really do something these last couple years. They weren't able to do it. They missed their time. Cowboys are losers. The key staff for this game is not really ultra surprising, but the 49ers are 3-0 when winning the turnover battle and 0-4 when they lose it. So, I mean, this goes for a lot of games. As long as the 49ers keep the ball clean, they don't turn it over, they should win this game. And I think they're going to do that. So I have them winning 24-21. to Pittsburgh versus the Giants. The Giants are one funny franchise in all sorts of ways. The Florida Marlins of football, as I've called them many times. The Steelers coming off of a Sunday night game where they benched Justin Fields for Russell Wilson, and it looked kind of awkward at first because Wilson got off to a slow start, and then everybody forgot about it because Wilson played well. The Giants, though, are actually somewhat good on the road, which really doesn't make any sense. But the key staff for this game is that Daniel Jones on the season has six touchdowns and no interceptions on the road, yet at home has no touchdowns and four interceptions. So he somehow turns into an MVP caliber quarterback on the road. It just doesn't make any sense. But I think despite Daniel Jones' superpowers, I think the Steelers will win this one rather comfortably 20 to 10. Shout out to Hero Ben Roth. And here are my official predictions summed up this week. I lost the Thursday night prediction. I thought the Vikings were going to win. The one time I picked them to win after calling them tenders, they lose. They lose. They have really fucked my record this season, which is still managing to be a pretty good percentage of games I've called correctly. But the Vikings have been the biggest assholes when it comes to messing with my record. So fuck them. I knew they were fake.